Welcome to Agora by Give Something Back to Berlin. In this podcast series, we'll be finding out how migration has changed our urban landscape and exchange ideas with those who are making a difference. Join us while we tackle issues ranging from human rights and diversity to migrant identity and belonging. Hello and welcome back to Agora. My name is Marie. I will be hosting today's episode and joining me is Daniela from Jack an education center for female refugees and women in need of shelter here in Berlin. Nice that you're here with us today. Thank you. Hi, Marie. So can you describe your role at Jack and when and why you first joined? Um, Jack operates since eight years now and um, I started a couple of months later after it came into uh, being. Um, I had before often uh, taught German classes in different uh, centers for refugees and uh, I got interested in the project Jack because it's uh, just for women Mm -hmm. and yeah so I started there to teach German language alphabetization classes also and some years ago now I um, changed um, into the institution I'm now the project manager I'm planning the activities the classes I'm uh, enrolling new students also do the fundraising (laughs) so I do every task that is needed (laughs) So you're already mentioning it a little bit. Um, what services do you offer at Jack? Yeah, we are um, an educational institution addressed to refugee women with a high um, need of protection and for shelter. And um, our services, the core of our services are German classes and alphabetization classes for these women. Um, often they don't have access to um, other educational institutions like the so-called Integrationskurse run by the state. Um, but they come to us because they cannot access, access these and um, we offer them German uh, language classes also with additional child care um, next to it and other activities. Mm. So Jack is specific for female refugees. Um, how does the situation of female refugees in Berlin differ from that of male refugees and what are the specific challenges maybe they face? Female refugees often face um, many sorts of um, difficulties and even different sorts of discrimination. Um, we see that uh, women here, women refugees in Berlin or in Germany, um, have access to all the services quite um, later after um, male refugees mm-hmm. do that. This is often because of um, their role within the families or they are um, taking care of s- small children, which hinders them of um, access. Um, to any services at all and um, yeah it needs to address these women with uh, specific um, offers um, to really um, um, improve, improve the situation for mm-hmm. them. So you, you're saying you're offering language classes, alphabetization, but this problematic that you, uh, this problem that you were just describing, how do you help them address this specific situation? Yeah, for example, we offer uh, courses with um, parallel child care. Mm-hmm. So women who don't have um, a Kita Platz for their small children um, can um, start with their educational process um, with the German language classes, despite having um, the child care work, so to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I think the German language for them is uh, one of the crucial parts mm-hmm. to, uh, to start a living here, to start a future here. Um, after maybe the accommodation is set when they, uh, they arrive in Germany, um, they want to um, yeah, begin to think of the future and uh, in a space like ours, um, they have this uh, safe space. They have uh, a space which is only amongst women. Um, also, the teachers and the other staff are all f- uh, involved are, are only women. So there is this um, um, atmosphere of trust um, which evolves after a while. And um, yeah, we can really have, help them to concentrate on their own future. Mm-hmm. Why do you think female refugees are still underrepresented in the public eye? I think when we um, when we think of the discourse of uh, refugees coming to Germany over the past years, um, it was this discourse was often about uh, male refugees um, in negative and in positive um, ways, and um, I noticed that refugee women often are seen just as in a more passive role mm-hmm. or um, victimized some, somehow, um, which is in fact not true, um, but. Um, the 
offers, the services, um, are mainly addressed or like let's say designed um, for the needs of uh, male refugees mm -hmm. and women, um, as I said before, cannot really attend them. Um, so it ends up, it's like a, um, <laughs> like a system that ends up that they will um, maybe um, have lower paid jobs in the end, that they will not have a voice um, to, um, to state what they want um, in society here. Um, and so I think it's crucial to start already mm. in the beginning. <laughs> it's kind of a system that perpetuates yes. the problem, yeah. how it's set up, so you're helping, you're trying to address that, yes. that yeah. problem. Mm -hmm. So, as we all know, the pandemic, we've been living yeah. with it for <laughs> quite some time now. Yeah. Um, how has the pandemic affected your work and also the women that you work with? The, we had two longer lockdowns um, and these were really hard impacts in our work and uh, for the women we work with, um, for the women attending our classes. Um, first of all, we had to shut down the, um, the courses in the classrooms and um, after a while of adapting, um, we started online courses, which is not so easy for women who don't have um, access to digital, um, digital devices or are not trained to use them, um, but it worked better and be better after a while, we noticed that. Also, they gained new skills, which can be useful in other um, aspects then later. Um, but especially, I think the second lockdown was very hard because it was longer, and uh, many of the women um, yeah, complained that they were in isolation for such a long time, um, together only with their children. Also, small plans, maybe that it for the future, um, job offers or so were, de were denied um, and so many lives got kind of interrupted. That was really hard. Um, yeah, it's not over as you said, but maybe the situation will get a bit better now. Hopefully. Hopefully um, yeah. Unfortunately, now we have another ter terrible situation at hand, which is the war in Ukraine. Um, is this already affecting your work and how? Yes, we have a lot of, um, uh, we got contacted from um, Ukrainian women or from people who help um, women from Ukraine who are looking for um, general help as well, but also for um, German classes in, in specific. Um, we have to see a bit how um, the situation will evolve with access to like this integration classes, as I said in the beginning. But um, what I noticed already in the course of the last weeks is um, that women in our German classes, but coming from different, um, also war-driven countries like mm. Afghanistan, Syria and, uh, and Iraq and so on, um, they also have the wish to help already, which um, is really very, very good to see. They, um, yeah, want to, they donate um, money or um, clothes, um, they want to help uh, the children arriving here. Yeah, it's really good to see that um, um, they have kind of the same experiences and um, yeah, it's good to see that um, there's such a helpful attitude there. That is actually super nice to see and it's kind of, um, it's, it's lovely that you mentioned this because this is kind of what all these projects are about that we're talking about. Like yes people get help but people also want to give something yeah. back, back, which we'll be talking about in a little yeah. moment. Um, but first, let's talk about how do you think migrant and refugee women can enrich the cultural landscape in Berlin? In so many ways, <laughs> I think. I mean, I, I see these uh, women every day in our classes, in our institution. They're such strong women. Um, they have suffered so much and have uh, went such a long way. Um, but they um, are here now and they are yeah, <laughs> um, building a future for themselves and uh, I think uh, al already in this aspect we can um, learn so much from their experiences and their views and so. Um, we will hopefully get a, um, a new project in the next couple of next months um, where we will um, help women um, while in our uh, German classes to um, help voluntarily in social institutions for a couple of hours a week maybe. And uh, this will help them, of course, yeah, to, um, to find a role maybe. Um, but also, it, I think it will show that it uh, enriches the society as well, because um, it brings new perspectives to these institutions, to the teams. Um, to the clients of these institutions and um, yeah, we see that women have so many resources they came here with 
um, even if they're maybe not formally documented on paper, but um, mm. they have so much to give, so it's, uh, it's a good thing. You're just talking about volunteering. Um, do you have volunteering roles at Jack? Yes. How can people get involved? Um, we have, besides of another colleague of mine in the office, and um, the six uh, freelance uh, German teachers we have, and one child carer, all the others are volunteers. So we have um, around 40 volunteers helping with the child care, um, with the Nachhilfe, like one-to-one -one tutoring after German classes, um, with other activities like, like uh, sports programs, art programs. Um, so without the volunteers, <laughs> we would be nothing. And we're always, um, yeah, looking for new volunteers. We're always happy about people who contact us. Um, also about people who contact us with an idea. We're so um, happy that in the past so many people came to us and uh, even have the idea of a project already. Mm -hmm. I want to do a yoga class for, for the women at your school. And that's uh, really, really good. So for people who want to volunteer, but obviously also for women who want to um, use your services, where are you located and um, how can you access these services that you're offering? Um, we are located in Neukölln, um, near S and U-Bahn station Hermannstraße. We are a small institution there with just a couple of rooms. Um, you can find uh, all the internet. Uh, information in the internet also. And we will put a link, yeah. of course. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and women find our services quite easily, I see, at the moment, um, or for, <laughs> for a longer time already. Um, often other students uh, bring their friends and family members and neighbors along, which is uh, very nice. It also shows that these services are really um, well seen. Um, also social workers contact us um, uh, to ask for, for German uh, classes and then um, I invite these women and we do like a small um, um, talk in the beginning and so I see which German class would, would be suitable. So you've been with Jack for a, a number of years now. <coughs> Why are you personally passionate about this cause? When, when I think of Jack and my work there, um, the first thing is this positive atmosphere uh, coming into my mind, uh, which uh, is really running for, for years. Um, these women come to us um, on a daily basis, over a month, over years, so, um, and it's run by women, it's only visited by women, so it makes this a special atmosphere um, of uh, trust and uh, I think diff specific topics can just be easily uh, spoken about because there's no shame or so. Um, and uh, this, um, we talked about volunteering, also this, um, that everyone is helping um, the other side at the same time. Uh, we had um, or have and ha had uh, mer many students from our class um, who are also helping our, in our child care or who are often offering a Persian dance class, for example. So um, there's no, not this uh, specific role um, distribution between uh, two groups, but it's rather like sharing, um, sharing the idea of helping another. So speaking of helping another and what we were talking about before is giving back and this is also the signature question that we ask all of our guests, What's, what does giving back mean to you? When I, when I think of my person, personally, giving back is, um, I mean, just by my birth I received so many advances already and um, so for me giving back something is quite logically uh, because I think that everybody needs to have the same um, chances and possibilities so <laughs> I really just want to do that but also what I see is when giving there's just immediately uh, uh, always coming something back or giving something back or if you can say um, something is given on also like mm -hmm. I said this, uh, these women um, who are first, first um, receiving support now want to pass it on to um, other people. So I think giving back is um, yeah, like a really um, nice concept or like it's, uh, it's something that enriches uh, us all. This is a really lovely thought. So thanks for sharing your views with us today and also talking more about the work of Jack with us. Thank you.